Hey everybody. Okay, so today we are on lesson two of module three and our aim is make equivalent fractions with sums of fractions with like denominators. Okay, but before we get started with that, we're going to do a quick review problem, a word problem. Mr. Hopkins has a one meter wire he is using to make clocks. Each fourth meter is marked off with five smaller equal lengths. If Mr. Hopkins bends the wire at three-fourths of a meter, what fraction of the marks is that? So what I'd like you guys to do is draw either a number line or a tape diagram and figure this out for me, okay? And then come back and check your work, see if you did what I did. Okay, so here is what I did. I have both set up for you. So if you did a number line, you start off with 0 fourths and you go to 4 fourths, which is 0 and 1. And you would break that up into 4 parts. So you have 1 fourth, 2 fourths, and 3 fourths in between. And then even smaller than that, within each quarter, you would have five equal lengths, five smaller equal lengths. So each fourth of a meter is marked off with five smaller equal lengths. So that's what I did with my dots, okay? And he bends it here at three-fourths. So how would you find the answer here? What fraction, if it's five smaller parts, equals three-fourths? So we're looking for an equivalent fraction with a different denominator. So we're going five equal lengths. So we need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen parts out of what's the possible whole here. If we kept going to one, we would have, we stopped at fifteen right here, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it would be 15 out of 20 would be the smaller fraction that would be equivalent to 3 fourths. Okay, if you did a tape diagram, you would have it looking like this. You would have four equal parts. It would be bent here at 3 fourths. And it, in effect, each one of these fourths would be broken into five equal pieces. So in the end, you would have um, three fourths because that came from here. One, two, three out of four equals how many fifths would you have? You would have five. 10, 15 colored in, right? So we would have 15 colored in out of how many possible ones? 5, 10, 15, 20, right? So it's the same thing. So 3 fourths equals 15 twentieths shown on a number line. 3 fourths equals 15 twentieths showed with a bar diagram. Okay, so let's move on to today's work, which is here for you. So it's relatively easy. One third plus one third equals two thirds, right? It says it right there. So what they want you to do is on this number line here, ma mark it off with in thirds. So you, they're just asking you to be approximate. So say that's one third and two thirds and that here is three-thirds, right, because that's the whole. Okay, so what they're showing us here is the same thing that I just drew, and they're adding. So this is considered one jump, and this is one jump by thirds. Okay, so that's where this is coming from, which is sort of new for us. So it's two jumps times one-third equals two-thirds. Okay, so you're following that? It all It's also the same thing as just adding this directly. Your common denominator is three, and then you add your numerators and you get two. Okay, let's keep going. So here, 
it's all set up for you. So on the number line, mark the endpoints as 0 and 1, and between the 0 and 1, make eight parts of equal length. This time only label what is necessary to show three eighths. So this is what they did down here, exactly what they're saying. So you didn't have to label every single um, tick mark. You just needed to put three eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths, seven eighths, okay? Because that's what you're, basically that's what you're dealing with. So again, if we just do this straight across, 8 is our denominator, and then we add these up. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, so our answer is 7 eighths. So now they ask us to do this. Express it as a multiplication equation. So again, you have to think about the full hops. How many 3 eighths are we doing? 1, 2. Okay, so that's 2 times 3 eighths because we did two three-eighth hops plus an extra one-eighth. Okay, do you guys see that? So they're taking this addition sentence and turning it into multiplication because there's two three-eighths, so that's here, plus one-eighth equals seven-eighths. It's the same thing. Instead of doing it strictly with addition, they're showing you how to do it with multiplication. Moving on, let's go. Okay, so here we have the improper fraction. So we need to first break this up. Okay, so it's telling us on a number line, mark the endpoints as zero and six halves. Estimate to make six parts of equal length, this time only label two halves and record the whole numbers above the number line. So this is done here, okay? So this is what I want you to see. So you would make your own number line, which is what I want you to do. I don't want you to just look at this and be like, oh, okay, I get it, I don't need to do this work. In your notebook, you're writing this down so you get the hang of it. So we're moving two halves every single time right? So we know that two halves is one. So we have one, two, three. Because if we take this and it's telling us how many holes are in here, we do six divided by two, which is three. And now we're showing it as an addition sentence and then as a whole number sentence. Okay, and then they want you to show it as the multiplication sentence. So you have six halves equals two halves plus two halves plus two halves. How many jumps did you make? So that's what we that's where we get our number we're multiplying by. I made one, two, three full jumps times two halves, which is the same thing as saying one, therefore three times one equals three, okay? So we have an addition and a multiplication sentence for doing this, all right? Okay, problem four. Show eight fifths as the sum of fifths and three fifths. So here they have eight fifths, and they break it down into one whole five fifths plus three fifths, because again, this is an improper fraction. So we can't have that. Remember, I told you this is the body, this is the head. You can't have that. You need to have. You can't have a giant head. You have to take the body out and make the head normal sized. So what's the body? Five fifths is the whole person's body right? And now how many do we have left over? Three-fifths. So if we're doing it in reverse, we would have one and three-fifths. That's our answer if we did it straight from here, okay? So now they want you to take this apart again, okay? So the five-fifths comes here, the three-fifths comes here, and we add it up and we would get eight-fifths. So if it's an addition problem, 
we would do 5 plus 3, which equals 8 fifths, which equals 1 plus 3 fifths, and the answer is 1 and 3 fifths. So they're saying to represent 1 and 3 fifths, you could do this, or you could do this, or you can even do this. But they're looking for that one. Okay, let's keep going. Show 7 thirds as its sum of 6 thirds and 1 third. So again, it's an improper fraction, can't have it. Take out the body, which is the whole, which is 3 thirds. And then what do I have left over? Plus 4 thirds. Well, that's still too much. This is still too big. So let's take it a step further. So it will be 3 thirds plus, take out the whole here, 3 thirds. And what do I have left over? 1 third. Okay, so that's how I break it down initially. Okay, they, they went right to 6 thirds, but I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it that way right now. I'm showing you 3 thirds plus 3 thirds plus 1 third. 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 7 thirds, so I'm still right on track. So now they want you to show it as 6 thirds right here and 1 third. Okay, that's fine. Now they want you to do the multiplication thing. 2 units of 3 thirds, that is what they're showing you here. So this would be the hops, right? two three thirds and which means plus one more third okay so seven thirds then is between what two whole numbers so if I did a number line and I'm working on seven thirds what whole numbers will that be between because now we have to finish this here so what do we have? We have our final answer would be 2 right here because that's 2 times 1 basically and 1 third. So what two whole numbers would it be between? Well, it would be between 2 and 3. And if this was broken into thirds, we would get one, two, three, it would be about here. So that's the two numbers. It's in between. Okay, you guys understand that? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one more problem with you guys because I think that this is not that difficult for you, but I just want to show you one more thing on your problem set. So if they give you a problem, on your problem set this is actually D. So 2 times 3 fourths plus 1 fourth. So what they want you to do here is like basically I would do the parentheses, right? So I would do this and then think about that. So 2 times 3 fourths is what? So it's, oh, what do you think? So if you got 6 fourths plus 1 fourth, you did it correctly. And now we're going to add those. 6 plus 1 is 7 fourths can't have that so we're turning it into a mixed number how many whole holes can I take out of that so my whole is four fourths so how many four fourths are in seven fourths well there's one and then how many left over three fourths because seven minus four is three okay so that should get you started. So do the problems that you're supposed to do and we'll go over them tomorrow.